Hi, Steve Ruffley. It's another live trading clinic here. So I'm going to focus on the dollar yen today. Obviously, there's been a lot of movement after my uh, my session with the FOMC minutes last night. Market sold off quite aggressively um, to begin with. And as I said, <laughs> I didn't understand it. I did not understand why the market was selling off. Subsequently, the market's rebounded. So very interesting, really. There was nothing really in that uh, FOMC minutes for me that screamed out any kind of anything. So the fact that the market sold off initially was basically um, conjecture. It was all about the Fed saying they're going to stay, you know, on course. And if the economy doesn't get any worse, you know, they've still got, you know, the ability to, you know, carry on the bomb back buying scheme and, you know, continue with quantitative easing. So it was pretty much a non-event. Uh, however, the market did kind of, you know, spike down for a good few hours after the FOMC. But I think everybody kind of sat back. And in the cold light of day, thought, well, actually, that's not that bad news. And then I'll, I'll show you in the charts that basically we've bought back pretty much to where the move started. So there was much more value in buying the dips than there was selling into that move. But again, that's just my opinion. That's just the way I trade. There's no way I could justify taking a short in the indices based upon what was said in the FOMC minutes last night. But again, we're all different. So trading clinic, I'm going to read the risk warning as always. Spread betting of CD trading above current high risk of capital and fronting losses would exceed your initial deposit. But it be suitable for everyone, so please ensure that you fully understand the risk involved. The information and comments provided herein under all circumstances are considered and offer a solicitation to invest. Nothing herein should be construed in investment advice. Information is believed to be accurate. The data is produced. Education only. Content of the webinar is posted by the moderator, mindtrade.com. Content is not constitute financial investment or tax advice. Intro to comments not accept and liability of the content of comments made during this session. So what we're going to cover, as always, do some live charting analysis. We've got to focus on the dollar yen. Again, I just put these things in, you know, as a bit of a focus point. The, the dollar yen might not be the product that's trading technically or fundamentally great right now, but we'll go through it, see what it is. But as always, open forum. If you want to ask me where support and resistance is in any product, just ask me. Just type in the chat window and we'll go through it. Multiple time frame trading, that's how I trade. I trade off different time frames. But, you know, again, that's doesn't seem to be a new thing for me, but it seems to be a fairly new thing in the market. You know, people keep asking me, what time frame do I use for trading? Well, you use all time frames. You know, you don't, you don't specifically stick to one time frame. You know, what's, what's the point? Why, why else would you have different time frames? We didn't look at them. Fundamental analysis, we're trading in the wake of whatever was construed to be the, you know, the, the FMT minutes and what traders took their decisions on. So we talk about te technical and fundamental analysis. And if you see anything decent, I'll put a live trade on uh, and questions and answers are always. So basically, you know, th this chart here is the, um, in the S&P. So you can see that it's sold off. Now, I've got a Fibonacci retracement. This Fibonacci retracement is based upon the five-minute um, volatility. Okay, so we're just taking a Fibonacci from where the actual move in the five minutes started and ended. So quite interesting, isn't it, that actually... The market only moved from the initial move another another 45 ticks. Okay, so the market in the first couple of minutes of trading, you know, traded 158 ticks, but only yeah after that about a five minute close, trade another 40 down. So I have these technical levels in here. I mean, this is another one that I, 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 you know a level that highlighted as a key reversal point in the market. So we didn't get down to this level here at one kind of, you know, six to five. But we did hit my other technical levels to the pit, pretty much. So one, six, three, two, one, six, three, three. So no real coincidence that the market does, you know, exactly what my technical levels say. Not to say that I traded this. I didn't buy any um, of the S&P back here. Should have done. because that was a nice trade, but I didn't. Because I didn't really understand why the market was moving down. And because they didn't understand that, I didn't really understand why I should buy it back. The odds for me were always buying low rather than kind of selling into the move because there was no real information from the FOMC minutes. All there was was conjecture and, uh, you know, initial down spike. So I don't sell into a move, I don't understand. But also, you know, <laughs> you know to, to my kind of, you know, dismay, I did not buy on the way back. But I didn't really kind of... Apart from this just being a good technical level to buy back, no fundamental reason that you have any, any reason to buy back in the market. So we can see that, obviously, all the other markets have taken it positively. So the initial sell, you know, and the spike down was to get all, you know, just the normal traders out, to be honest. 
when actually, you know, we reviewed, reviewed the FOMC minutes, it was actually good news, basically, that we're not going to stop quantitative easing. That was that was the message for me. We're going to do it when the time's right. So it was another cop-out by Bernanke in the Fed to basically say that we don't really know what's going on. We don't know if the economy's strong enough. The job data, housing data's good. But does that spell a recovery? We don't know. So we'll keep buying by 85 billion you know dollars worth of, of, of bonds. And we'll keep doing that until we think that when we speak and comments come out, they're not going to send the markets down. That's all they said. So market spiked down basically because nobody knew what was going on. I can say that hand on heart. If I don't know what's going on, nobody does. Simple as that. So the market sold off for whatever reason it did, again, because that was just the overall direction of the uh, short-term move. And when people thought, well, actually, that news isn't that bad, the market bought back up. So a lot stronger in Europe. I mean, we've got the hourly charts at 50 minutes here. So let's flip back to the daily. You know, we can see that... Um, majority of markets have taken that, that Fed data very positively. So the FTSE is basically bounced off again. These blue levels are highlighted the key levels of um, support, and it's going to hit 6.479. Why? I don't know, because that's a key level. Okay, I, 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 Obviously, I do know how I come up with these levels, but you know, they're based upon Fibonacci, they're based upon um, you know, daily, weekly, monthly levels of interest, and they're going to be hit. So basically, the old long from here, you're not going to take any profit until 6479. Um, Eurostock's going to get down to here, 2753. Um, DAX, probably 50%, is going to get up to here, to 8403. So, again, I mean, it's, it's always easy analyzing technical data after an event happened, isn't it? And it's great to sit here and go, yes, all these lines are on my chart for a reason, and they've been hit. Or had they been tested? You know, this level here in the S&P became support. This became resistance support. It's, you know, again, it's really, really easy when, you, when the event has passed. The difficult part, as we know, is trading these in real time as they happen. But the whole point of why I do the multiple time frame analysis that, is that I look on daily charts, weekly, monthly charts, and put key levels in. When you zoom in, you know, and look at, you know, the, the FTSE, for instance, on a, let's look on a 15-minute chart. It's no surprise that we rejected key resistance. So when the market tested these levels, bounced, okay, broke through, came back to it, support comes resistance, market then went up. You know, again, look at us, again, bouncing off this line, 6434. Four. You know, is this going to act as support resistance, marking a break down to here? Can you start retracing the gains or bounce and hit these levels of key resistance? You know, that's, that's a difficult part of trading, isn't it? I don't, I don't know. You know, again, if, if the market's going to find, it looks like it's going to find support, it doesn't. Again, you know, look at these tails breaking through. Okay, so that might be a good area to buy in the short term. But the market's already spiked up all this way. So again, use your tools, use Fibonacci. So in the short term, the market's moving from here to here. Okay, so it's bounced off the 23.6, ties on the level. Must mean it's significant. Hasn't got anywhere near the 50%. So what do we do? You know, put a Put some indicators on, you know, put, um, you know, some RSI. Well, let's see where we're trading. So the RSI is down, okay? So it's not, you know, down, down, but let's do the 50%. It's 50% here. So really, if I was going to buy the market, I'd look for the market to bounce off the 50% RSI, head back to the 70, and find some support on the 23 or the 38. Those are going to get back to the key 50%. Okay, that's, that's the main measure. Get back to the 50%, then the market has an opportunity to retrieve the whole move. If it bounces off the 50%, it's got a chance to go up. Okay, so, and that's, that's how you use, you know, all time frame analysis, how you use the market charts. You know, see what information is working for you. You know, flick it to the hourlies. And the hourlies say, you know, shows you the same picture. Okay, lots of hourly support on this move here. Now, the market is still... Okay, come down in RSI when we traded below the 30%. The market moves up, but it didn't move up that much, did it? Okay, so we're really buying on weak signals. So the market really, for me, wants to move down. So I'd expect, actually, a break. A break from uh, 6434 in the FTSE. The market's test 50% and break down towards the 30. So for me, the FTSE is a sell. There we go. That's how you trade. That's all time for analysis. So we're going to talk about the euro dollar, uh, sorry, the euro versus the Japanese yen today. So let's just go on to our 
Dollar majors. This is the daily chart in the dollar versus the yen. So we see, you know, a good, strong up move. I mean, again, if you're looking at the, the daily candles, you can draw all sorts of, you know, easy, easy trend tools. We can see the market's kind of gone from here to here. So the market's still, you know, in an uptrend. It's moving sideways now, but on the dailies, you can see double bottom. Market again has rejected a test of this line, a test of, you know, 96.74. The market's moving up. So where's the dollar yen going to get to? 99.938. Okay, simple as that. Look on the hourlies, show the same kind of thing. We're above the trend, we're above the moving average. The market's going to probably come back to good level of support down here, retest, and it's going to hit 99.939. Nine eight, sorry. You know, that's as, as simple as you can make charting. Again, we, you know, look how we've used the Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands resistance come back. Okay, close below the moving average, but we're still in a tight range. You know, if you're just drawing straight lines of support and resistance, draw them with your eye. Simple as that. Market, support, resistance, support. Broke through, resistance. Where's resistance going to come back to? Support. Okay, resistance. Now support. Market's going to come down another 50 ticks and then go up 130 ticks. Simple as that. Okay, any questions? Any thoughts? You know, the, the market really wants to get back to P levels. It wants to get back to 101. Okay, that's what all the levels are telling you it wants to get back to. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't want to, you know, it doesn't want to sell off, does it? I mean, if you look at the monthly chart, okay, it's had all this opportunity to sell off. Okay, and then it found these great lines of support down here at 76. And after that, it's just bought up. It didn't want to sell back. So do yourself a Fibonacci. Okay, Fibonacci, start the down move. Sorry. Start the down move here. Get to support here. Yeah, so the market is above. I just touched the 50%. Okay, so the high of this monthly chart has touched the 50%. Is that a coincidence? No, not a coincidence. So you can make an argument here that we've closed below 50% on monthly. So actually, on the highest of time frames that I look at the monthly, the market is closed, rejected a close above the 50%, is moving down. So maybe the buy signal I just said was not so clear on the hourlies. However, you know, again, if you close above the 38.2 and you're targeting the 50 on the uh, higher time frame, that could be bullish. However, on the monthly, it certainly, for me, looks bearish. Weekly, same scenario, okay? We've closed below the 50%. This market is definitely going to test the lows of these candles here, this trend line. And where does that tie in with? 38.2 on the monthly Fibonacci. Surprise, surprise. Daily, okay? Daily, 38.2 a little bit further away now. But the daily is we've drawn that trend line in, and it seems that we're kind of running out of momentum on the downside. So all them long-term bears in the market on the monthly and weekly chart, maybe they're all going to get pushed out of the long-term shorts. Okay? So that's why you benefit from looking at the higher time frame. You benefit from what people look at and what people think. So the market has bounced twice, you know, three times. Look at these areas down here. The market's rejected a push lower and it's coming back. So the long-term, the market might want to break this trend level and get down to 382 you know, 93 and 88. But on the short term, for me, on the dailies and hourlies, it looks like we've got a bit more buying sentiment in the market. So I'd be buying these low levels and then letting them trade up. So 97.063, good buy. Okay, 98 spot 111, good buy. So where's the next good buy going to be? Well, it's going to be 98.9938. So really, you want to get long on the dailies, stay long until you hit and test that, and the market can come back. So you look at the hourly, it's the same levels. You know, it looks, you know, very, very different, doesn't it, on the bigger time, on the smaller time frame. You look at the monthlies. The monthlies can tell you anything. I mean, it just tells you direction. You know, the monthlies are very hard to assimilate, assimilate the information. So really, for me, on the hourlies, on the short term, the market for me is going to break back another 48 ticks and then try and test the highs. So you've got a nice swing of 100 ticks to make some money in this range here. If it breaks here. It's going to get to 97. Simple as that. But again, you could take a, a quite an aggressive long 
negative average and buy all the way down. Even if it breaks here, you buy all the way down. So you can put some other kind of tools on to sharpen this up. Put some Bollinger Bands on. So Bollinger Bands were towards. Closed inside the hourly is the upper. So for me, no surprise that the moving average ties in with 98.11. Okay? So the short-term trade is selling in this level. But for me, I'd be more happy buying all the way down to this level than letting it bounce to here rather than just selling into that short-term level. Does that make sense? Any questions? Any thoughts? I mean, you know, again, when you look at the monthly charts, you know, you get so much data, you get overwhelmed. You know, all the market's done, you know, until February is sold off. We bounce back and bought back up. But really, indecision here. The market's not really doing anything one way or the other. It wants to get to 101, you know, as much as it wants to get to 80. There's no real... For me, in this particular chart here, in the monthly, there's no real overriding direction. Okay, but again, the 50% move is key. There's no surprise that I've drawn a Fibonacci from the high to the low, and we've rejected the 50% on the monthly, is there? Again, these things are so powerful. Then you, you take that Fibonacci level in the monthly back to your daily and try and make a, an informed decision. Okay, in the short term, that's going to be support or resistance. So maybe in the short term, the market has the Opportunity to go up an extra 100, you know, 20, 30 ticks or so before it comes back down. It seems to be running out of momentum. Lower highs, lower highs, yeah, low lows. So maybe in the short term, this will push up to the top end of the bond and then sell back down. But it's, it's how to you, how, how you decide you want to trade this. Yeah, I mean, of course we'll see 100 again. No, the, the, the thing about trading is that, you know, nothing's a surprise, nothing's inevitable. The majority, doesn't matter how good or bad a trader you are, you're always going to be able to call the same things as everybody else. So we can sit here right now and I will say that, yes, without a shadow of a doubt, hand on heart, the, you know, the, the dollar versus the yen is going to get to 100. When it's going to do it, I don't know. I make my living from writing, you know, for Bloomberg's, Reuters, being the chief market strategist of Intertrader, and I still get trades wrong. I can tell you in the morning what's going to happen. I can tell you to the tick what's going to happen. That's my, that's my skill. That's what I can do. Can I trade and make money from it? Not all the time. Yep, sometimes I can't even take my own advice and I'm wrong. You know, that's, that's, that's what makes trading so addictive, you know, so powerful for people. That you can have the right overriding kind of view of the market and say the market's going to rally 200 points. And then you find yourself selling it. Or in that 200 points, you don't make any money, even though it's gone from the low to the high. That's trading. It's difficult. It's not an easy thing to do. Anything Anything else, guys? I mean, again, I mean, the dollar versus the yen is, is a difficult one. I mean, you're talking really about you know, currency wars. And you have to think again that people people love to talk down America and that, you know, you know, they're, they're a strange nation, you know, world police and that kind of stuff. But they've really kind of stuck to the guns. And the only reason why the world economy is pointing upwards and, you know, is looking positive is because of America. You know, America has stuck to the low interest rates, it's stuck to the quantitative easing. They're all one, you know, united nation going forward. And, you know, if you mess with America, they'll bump it. So, like it or lump it, you know, they, they, they have a good kind of solid plan and they're sticking to it. You know, what's going to happen in Europe? I've no idea. Angela Merkel, you know, she's like a talking muppet. She doesn't know what she's doing. All they're doing is, you know, saying that Germany can't be responsible for all these debts. But in the same breath, all they do is keep bailing out, you know, poorer member na nations like, like Greece and Portugal and Spain. So once you bail one out, you bail them all out. Is Germany the size of America? No, it's not. So Germany, all it's doing is setting itself up for a massive fall. Will Angela Merkel get re-elected? Not a chance. Not a chance in hell. Everybody wants change. You know, if you think you're a German now, and you're sat on your pension, seeing it dwindle by inflation, and knowing you're going to have to work another 10 years to support, you know, France, Spain, Germany, whatever you know, nation is going to, like, be next to the chopping board, you're going to think to yourself, no, nah, I'm not down for that. That's not really kind of, you know, that's not really, you know, my, my you know, kind of life plan. Yeah, I mean, Forrest Gall was just saying that she thought that Greece would leave um, the euro early. Do you know what? Greece would have left two years ago if it could. If it could. Do you know why it didn't? 
It was forced to stay in by Germany. Okay, so Greece wanted to leave. It wanted to go back to the drachma, go back to its donkeys and tourism, but it didn't. It couldn't. It wasn't allowed to. Because the world economy, you know, the, the, the European Union said, if you leave now, that's going to affect us all. So you can't leave. Here's some money on terms you don't want to take them, but you have to take them because we own you. Okay? We own you. So you do as you're told. None of this starting your rebel government and making noise and having riots. You stay poor for as long as we tell you to. Okay? So it's just like World War Three, but with money. Okay? You have no choice to do exactly what we say. Yeah. Okay, James. Well, the, U, the euro is quite resilient for now. It's quite resilient now until it decides to get smashed. It's resilient until I think it's had enough that I'll sell it. You know, I'll sell as many dollars, as many pounds, as many any other currency I can get my hands on against the euro. You know what it's going to do? It's going to get back to one spot three zero zero zero. That's where it's going to get back to. It's going to break that. And where's it going to go from there? One spot one. Because that's where the euro belongs. Euro belongs down there. It has no value to me. Okay? I own property all over the world. I own it in, you know, Spain. And you've got to sit on it. Yeah, what goes up will go down, but it will go up eventually. It has to find value. Right now, the euro is being resilient because it's driven up by speculators. Nobody in their right mind wants euros. Okay? If you've got a million pounds in the bank, are you going to transfer that million pounds into euros? No. No, you're not. You're going to transfer it to dollars. Hmm, maybe tempted. So if you think about it like that, why would you now, in the short term, be buying any currency versus the euro? What, because it's going up? Because it's resilient? Hmm, doesn't make any sense to me. Resilient just means that somebody's wrong somewhere. It's not resilient. It's going up because somebody's wrong. Somebody's wrong out there that bought a lot of euros and has to get out. That's what's driving the euro back up. The euro, for me, is going to get smashed. Simple as. Nobody cares about the rupee. Nobody cares about the Japanese yen, to be honest. They're irrelevant. These Tiger Nations emerging markets, they're just a load of rubbish. Simple as. All they, all they are is driven by speculators. Is China going to continue its, you know, unbelievable growth? No. Simple. And if it does, and we all have to pay $200 a barrel for oil, what's America going to do? It's going to invade China. Okay? You can't deny that history repeats itself. When other nations and other people start to step out of line, like Korea, what do they do? They get stamped on by the Western nation. This is not like... My, it's not my personal view. This is just me commenting on history. When other nations try and, you know, be the dominant power that we don't trust, we, we take the power away from them. Why do you think Iraq was evaded? You know, they, it's not it's not because of we, we didn't like, you know, Saddam Hussein. We couldn't care less about Saddam Hussein. We couldn't care less about how much oil they had. We just wanted them not to have power. So we, we as in the Western nation, invaded them. So there we go. You know, it's... All you've got to do is stick to the basic principles that everything's priced in dollars in the real world. When you go on the, uh, you know, the I, IPA, ICE Exchange, CME, what's everything priced in? Dollars. Everything's priced in dollars. So, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to start selling the dollar against other currencies? Well, why would you? Because although America prints the dollar, it has the least reserves out of the G8. You know, places like Sweden have more dollars than the U.S., okay? China and Japan have more dollars than the U.S. So if they have all these dollars, why is it in anyone's interest for the dollar to kind of keep depreciating? It's not. So the dollar can only ever go up while it is the biggest nation on earth. And when you talk about biggest nation, we're not talking just about population. You know, China's got the biggest population on the planet. You know, there's 20% of them live in a rice field. They haven't seen a telephone. They don't know what an iPhone is. What, what, you know, what value do these people have? Per capita, the U.S. is the richest nation on earth. Five times that of China. That's what makes money. But the fact of the matter is, President Obama, like him or loathe him, he's the most powerful nation on earth. 
If he says jump, the world jumps. Okay? All the other nations, you know how they do it? They do it by fear. Okay? Like Iran. Or we've got this secret nuclear program. You no, know America says, we don't like it. So we're going to ir- we're going to evade you or we're going to bomb you. We're going to take you off the planet. Okay? If we don't like it. That's power. That is power. So until China, you know, India or whatever, get that kind of status within the world, then start buying their currency. Until then, keep buying the dollar. Because I'll tell you what, if Steve Ruffley and my money doesn't want to sell against the dollar, why would you? Okay, I have plenty of cash all over the world. And if I want to buy the dollar, I will. I don't see, I have to jump in right now. This is a long-term thing. I'm happy with my base currency being the pound. You know, the pound's been a good friend to me. I think the UK, although a little bit woolly these days, is still in a good place. So if I don't want to put my money in pounds, I'm going to put it in dollars. I'm not going to start buying rupees. I'm not going to start buying the yen. I'm not going to start buying the euro. That's for sure. My money, as a professional trader, as a professional analyst, is with base currencies like the, the US dollar and the British pound. Okay, so that's my that's my thinking. So whenever it gets smashed down, the pound gets you know sold down, or the dollar, I'll I'll buy in dips because I'll always want to hold these currencies as a base. And that's how you have to approach and think about the market. It's the long-term game. Okay, so a few comments coming through. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, guys, you want know, to talk about the long game. We're talking about 10, 15, 20 years, 30 years. You know, the whole point is, you know, I've just said, you know, I don't want to be you know, short the dollar in any long-term thing. But I'm telling you on the dailies that, you know, the, the, the dollar could, you know, again, appreciate to 99.938, but then, the, you know, slip back down. I, the whole point is, you know, my fundamental views, my fundamental views, you know, the bigger picture stuff. You know, I can rant and rave all day and tell you why I'm pro the UK, pro um, the US, and, and negative on Spain. You know, I'm negative on Spain, but I own property there. You know, all this stuff happened in Gibraltar. I lived there for eight years. You know, half my property is in Gibraltar. Portugal, I own property there. So I don't want any of these places to, to fall apart, you know, because I still want to go there on holiday. I play golf in Portugal. So I want to go to Portugal it to be safe, you know, people to have jobs and, you know, the, the place to have a nice tone about it. I don't want it to, you know, fall back into recession and everyone be unhappy because that might affect my golf. You know, simple as that. I don't want my house in Spain to be, you know, the only one that's, you know, kept nice with the garden. I want everyone around it to be prosperous. So, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know all the answers. But what I'm trying to say is that everything has these cycles. And for me, the U.S. has been the only one that's been rock steady. You know, everybody else in the U.K., like Carney, a massive disappointment, a massive Canadian disappointment to me. All he had to do was come out, have some balls, and say, yes, we're going to tackle inflation. Okay, and everyone had gone, you know what, Carney, good for you. What did he do? The usual nonsense. Let's Fed follow. Let's keep rates low till 2016. You know, let's follow unemployment. Rubbish. I, I could have gone out there myself. I could have gone to the Bank of England and said, here, here you go. You know, I'm, I'm a, just a straight talking northerner. This is what you do. Okay? Link it to unemployment. All we've done is five years of stimulus. Five years of stimulus. Has it created employment? No, it's not. No, it's not. They've done nothing. Okay? All this bailing out the banks, lending to small businesses, create jobs, nothing. There's more money in the world than there's ever been. Companies like Apple, Google, Amazon have sat on more money than they've ever had. What they're doing? Nothing. Dodging tax and not creating jobs. Okay? That's all they've done. Nothing. The rich have stayed rich and the poor have got poorer. I'm on the rich side. I'm staying rich, so I don't really care. But is that good enough for, you know, the world economy, for these people that are paid to make these decisions? No, it's not. Because you can't build your house, you know, on a bed of sand. It needs a rock-solid foundation. It needs everybody else in the game to be winning. Okay? To be winning. And they're not. The majority of people are losing. And that's not a good long-term strategy. What would I say? I don't know what would I say. You know, I don't get, I don't get paid by the Bank of England. So I don't really care. I can make... 
make my own comments and say whatever. I mean, we've got jobless claims coming out now. I've not even got the squawk on, to be honest. I'm not. I'm, I'm that uninterested about jobless claims. Jobless claims will be up. So, got that coming out in right now. So, again, you know, if anyone's got a squawk on or they've got their data feeds, let us know what the jobless claims does. Three through th- Okay. Thanks, Roy. And what was that expected at? So, we've got three through... Th- so, it's bad. Yeah, so it's up, as I said. So, it's worse than expected. So, what's that going to do now? Okay, so the dollar versus the yen. Okay, is that going to send the yen, the, 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 this particular product down? Okay, we're, we're going we're gonna to buy the dollar against the yen? Let's just see. See what everything, everything else is doing. Okay, so the jobless claims has done nothing. Okay, I'm looking at the markets right now. It has made no difference whatsoever. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Forest Girl is exactly right. Up 13,000. Exactly, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, that, that's nothing. I mean, the grand scheme of things, what's 13,000 people in, in the U.S. economy is, is nothing. It's absolutely nothing. Um, it's not non-farm payrolls. It's nothing. You know, what annoys me about the FOMC minute, you know, linking the uh, inflation rate to jobless claims and that kind of stuff. Jobless is always going to go up because no matter how you kind of price in benefits, how you do it, there will be certain elements in, in society that, that will not want to work. So... It's the same in the UK when they stop the benefits. That they had this great statistic that 20,000 people the next day went into work because the benefits got stopped. There's still generations in the UK of people that haven't had jobs for three or four generations. Okay, you know, granddad didn't have a job, dad didn't have a job, you know, son didn't have a job. He has a kid at 15, he didn't have a job. It's inbred in people. So these people, unfortunately, are a lost statistic. Okay, if your dad's never had a job or any self-respect, why would you? You know, that's it. You know, why, why would you? If, you know, if my granddad never had a job, and my dad never had a job, well, you just think that, you know, benefits were the way to go. You get your house, you have your kid early, you know, you, you don't go on holiday, you have your Sky TV, and that's your life. Okay, that wasn't the way I wanted my life. You know, I came from a poor background. When I understood the way the world worked, I took it, I shook it up a bit, and I carried on. But, it, you know, it isn't about me. It isn't about us sat here that are interested in the market. It's about understanding that there'll be certain elements in society, that that's the way they live their lives. And that's fine. These are the kind of people that wouldn't listen to a, web- a webinar like this and understand why ultimately you'd be bearish the euro or why you'd be bullish the dollar. You know, why would they be interested in that kind of stuff? And it's these kind of thinkings that I think bring something, you know, to the table rather than just my technical analysis. I can tell you right now where the market's going to go. I told you. The, the euro dollar was going to hit one spot three, you know, one four five one. I'm going to come down. You know, these lines never change. Anytime you look at my screens, the lines don't change. Okay, bounce, break. But that's dead easy to say, isn't it? You know, that's not what I'm trying to bring value here. You know, if, if you bought my system, you know, and, and you just put these lines on yourself and traded them, you would generally make money. But it's the kind of the, it's the theory. It's it's the the fundamental analysis that brings real depth. You know, I've not just been trading for over a decade. Remember, I managed, I was a risk manager at Revco, the biggest trading firm in the world. I managed Snyder's, the biggest trading floor in Europe. You know, I'm only 33. I've done all these things. You know, there's nothing you can tell me that I haven't done or seen. There's nothing. You know, there's nothing. There is nothing you can tell me that I don't know about trading. Okay? But it's not, a platform for me. I do these things. I don't need to do these webinars. I don't need to do them. I can stop tomorrow and you'd never hear Steve roughly again. I do them because I like the interaction and I like talking to people that have got opinions and got like minded kind of ideas. Okay, it's not just about making it, it's about understanding the world we live in. And I think trading is a great way of doing that. It's understanding what what the movers and shakers are making happen. So for me, as I said, highlighted here in the euro dollar, the market for me rejected, you know, one spot three four, one spot three three. It's going to get down, isn't it? It's going to get down to this this psychological level at one spot three zero zero. Then make some decisions. Okay, it has to key resistance to anywhere near key support. You know, these are reports are sent to to Bloomberg. 
I sent to Reuters, Wall Street Journal, and they they published them. So if they were rubbish, then nobody would listen, would they? But I, I could sit here all day long with my big account and trade these levels. Yeah, Sell, sell, sell. All I'd do is make money. But that's boring after a while when you've got enough. What I want to do now is help other people understand that if you trade and chart in the right way, the markets aren't that difficult. You just have to be patient. And you have to take the emotion out of it and keep some sort of fundamental view. Understand what you're doing. OK, I don't like the euro. I think the euro is weak. So, again, I'd be selling the highs comes down. Sell the highs on key levels comes down. You now, look at these these trades. You get short here. You make 680 ticks. So here, the market's rejected this level now. If it closes on the dailies below this, where's it going to hit? One spot, three, zero, zero, zero. So you've got 355 ticks to play with. Okay, because that's where the market's going to go. The market's going to go from here to here, 358 ticks. So anybody want 358 ticks? Well, there you go. You can have it. What the market has to do in the short term, however, on the hourly chart, is close below here. Yeah? Close below the moving average, close below 133530 before it gets down to 13160, and then below that, as I said, 1 spot 3000. Okay? So draw trend lines on, draw whatever you want, but it makes absolutely no difference. The market is going to get to 1 spot 3000. I absolutely guarantee it. What I can't tell you is, unfortunately, when it's going to do it. It might do it in the next hour. It might take two weeks. It might take a month. I don't know. But for me, look for these smaller time frame signals. Look on the 15 minutes. Down, down. Rejection, down. Rejection, down. So look for the market to reject another high up here. One spot three, five, three, zero. And then what's it going to do? So all these people getting long now. Great. Let them. Let them buy the market. Let them buy the market. Buy, buy, buy. Euro's great. Euro's safe. Angela Merkel's great. Unemployment doesn't matter anymore. Unemployment's irrelevant. Not what I think, but there we go. Let's buy the euro against the dollar. The strongest nation on earth. There we go. Buy, 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 buy. Oh, okay. We've got to this level here. At one spot three, three, five, three, zero. Hmm. Don't want to buy any more up to this next key level up here. Well, do you know what? No, I don't. So I'm, I'm going to sell. What does the rest of the market think? You know what? I'm going to sell to the euro load of rubbish. Bang. What does he get down to? One spot three one six. We're after that. Spot three zero zero zero. Below that, look at all these lines. Yeah. Loads and loads of lines. Lines and lines and lines. Royston Basie. All these lines of resistance down here. So I don't know what's going to happen here. Maybe it might bounce. But in the short term, the market will bounce, bounce back down to here. Absolutely guarantee it. So how, how you do that and how you trade from it is entirely down to you. Yeah, okay, so 1.3 is a strong support. What we've just said, I've just said that it's going to get down there. So what you do is you sell high. Yeah, you sell high expecting it to get down there. I don't say buy at one spot three. I say sell to it. But I wouldn't sell necessarily sell anywhere in here. I'd wait for it to test higher and really extend before I then I sold it. That's what professional traders do. All people like you and, and, and you know, everyday investors think oh, what's going to happen in the markets. And you're right, you do. But what will happen is professional traders will make you think you're wrong. So you think, yes, strong support, so we'll definitely get down to one spot three zero zero zero. What I will do over the next few days, I'll buy it to here. I'll buy it to here. And just when you think, oh, well, yeah, actually, I want to get my short because it breaks here and wrong. I'll break it to here. And then I'll sell it all the way down to here. And you won't be able to sell it anywhere here because you're wrong. You lost all your money here. So I'll take all your money, thanks. So all this, for me, is profit. I know you're, you're going to be wrong here. You're going to be wrong here. You're going to be wrong here when you're selling it. So I'm going to buy all you people at the market. And just when you think, well, that's it. I'm wrong. I'm going to start buying some of yours instead of selling it. I'll sell it. And I'll take all your money all the way down here and all the way to down here. Because I can. Because I trade a big account. I have lots of money.
and I have time. That's what money buys you, time. Okay? So that's what all these other people in the city, all the people in these investment houses are doing. We all know it's going to hit one spot three zero zero zero. Okay? But in the short term, what we do is we get all the short term investors out until they can't go any higher, they think they're wrong, and then you sell it down. That's how markets work. Any questions? Any thoughts? Well, unfortunately, Forrest Gall, you know, it, it, it's true. And it's not just me as a, as a, as a trader saying it was me as a risk manager. You know, I managed people that traded colossal amounts of money. Colossal. Made me look like an absolute pauper. People that make individually a million euros a day. A million euros a day. 25-year-old guys doing that. Okay? I used to manage 144 people just like that. So if you think you know what's going on in the markets, you don't. Do I? Yes. Yes, I do. So I've been there. I, I, I was a, a market maker. I'm at the prices. Okay? I'm not trading off a spread. I am a price. I'm it. I'm the bid, the offer. So I know exactly how the markets work. Okay? So like all these other educators with PhDs and blah, 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 blah. They can tell you whatever they want. Okay? I'm not interested. You know, I'm sat here teaching new people in my beachfront apartment, in my underpants, because I'm rich. And the reason is because I can trade. So that's the difference. That's the difference I bring to the table. You know, not about conjecture, not about what could happen, what will happen. Okay? The market's going to get down to one spot three, one six one zero. Below that, one spot three, uh, zero zero zero. Okay? When it does it, I can't tell you. But it will do it. Okay, so what I'll be doing is I'll be selling these levels here, yeah, positioning myself short, and then be buying back here. So when people are trying to sell, oh, one spot three zero zero major support, maybe it'll break. I've already made my two hundred ticks out of that move, anticipating that. I've no interest what happens here. I'm selling the highs down to here. That's how you trade. Uh. Okay, my, my my view on tapering is that tapering is going to happen, just like interest rates are going to go up. You know, doesn't matter how powerful the Fed is, the Bank of England is, the ECB is, interest rates have to go up. That's just history. Okay, nothing any government can do. Yeah, we get past 2016, inflation's at 5%, interest rates go up. Simple as that. We, you know, we're living in a bubble, we're living in... You know, never, never land that, we, 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 you know, in the UK, we are keeping interest rates low, tied to unemployment, thinking that unemployment is going to change. Well, in stimulus and the billions and billions of pounds has not created jobs. What will? Nothing. All we're doing is churning out more and more graduates with 30 grand worth of debt, you know, going working in McDonald's. And what kind of a world is that? The world's going to have a massive shift in parity. It's not about recession anymore. It's about realigning expectations. Okay. Some people just have to expect to be poor. Simple as that. It's like Mark Zuckerberg saying that he's going to go to these emerging nations and, you know, put 5 billion PC users on the planet. Why? You know, what's someone in the rice field got to look on eBay for? They got not got any money. So it's idealistic, stupid people that have nothing better to do with the time. They got rich by accident, you know, trying to affect the world. Like Bill Gates trying to, you know, Cure malaria. Well, what's that really going to do in the world? You know, what's, what's that going to do? Nothing. It, it's, it's futile. It's pathetic. So what's going to happen is the market and the world's going to carry on as normal and it's going to do whatever the market wants to do. And in my opinion, the market is going to get stronger dollar-based and weaker euro-based. That's it. That's as simple as that. Well, absolutely for it, Scarp. I mean, what, 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 what do you want? I mean, if, if the if the data comes out and you know, good news is bad news, or no news is good news, or bad news is bad news, don't trade it. You know, just ignore it. Look for the bigger picture. Okay, that the U.S. has continued to to buy back. Look at you know, it's bought dips. So I mean, this is the S and P here. So okay, we've come back down. But look, look at this massive bull trend. If you you take a basic Fibonacci on the dailies from where the overall big move started. I would say that we found, you know, double bottom here, okay? So double bottom here, market's gone to these highs here, 
you know, we've still got, you know, this 50% in, in line. So the market's still got loads to drop before people start buying it and find that, you know, there's dip buying. But look, after every series of red candles, there's a green one. Okay, so until we get below this 50% at 1592, the market's still bullish. Okay, and still, until we get down to levels like this, okay, that's a massive level, 1566. Until we start trading below that, there'll be more buyers than sellers in the market. Simple as that. So market can drop all the way down here, another 648 tick. But you know what? I'll be buying it. I'll be buying every dip. Until we close below this, this 50%, I'm buying every dip in the stocks. Simple as that. Well, I mean, the, the, the trouble is, Forrest Gal, I mean, the, the talk of taper is the reason why we've dropped 728 ticks. Because the Fed hasn't come out to say they will or won't taper. So the market's dropped off 700 ticks on speculation. So the market says yes, and the, the Fed say yes, we're going to taper, which is inevitable. We all know it's going to happen. How fast is the market going to go? Well, maybe we get to here, or the 50%, so another 1,000 ticks, and then it's going to bounce. Because once everybody knows they're going to taper, then it's already in the market. The speculation is here. The speculation that we're going to taper is already done. So if you're trying to wait for that taper to be to Ben Bernanke, which you'll never say, to be honest, come out and say, yes, I is Ben Bernanke, chairman of the Fed. I'm going to stop quantitative easing period three tomorrow. OK, what's he going to do? Market's going to spike down to here or here in, 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 in 15 minutes. And then go up. Because once it's in the market, we know it's security. If we know we're going to taper, then there's no insecurity anymore. We know the answer is going to happen. But we always know the answer anyway. That it's inevitable. The Fed cannot keep buying $85 billion you know, dollars worth of bonds every month. They can't. They can't do it. There's not enough money in the world. So we all know the outcome and the answer. But it's how you make money from it. That's the important part, isn't it? Well, I don't know, Forrest Gale. I don't really know what to tell you. I mean, you know, good news is good news. Bad news is bad news. You know, it is it is what it is. But it doesn't mean necessarily the markets will move in the way you want it to. You know, you know, you have to read between the lines. You know, quantitative easing, you know, is said to be stopped. Actually, that's really good news. So the market will sell off aggressively, but that means that the Fed think the U.S. economy is self-supporting, self-sustaining. So the markets will go back up. So that's the way you've got to look at it. That, you know, good news is good news, bad news is bad news. You know, it's all completely, has to be put into complete context. That if the Fed say, yes, OK, quantitative easing, now's the time, the perfect time. The markets initially will sell off, but they'll buy back because the Fed, the most powerful you know, policy makers in the world, think that the US is strong enough to go on its own. So ultimately, the market will buy back up. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you, you know, the, the Fed, the ECB, the Bank of England, they're all the same. They're not going to come out and just say, what you want them to say. They're not going to come out and say, yes, you're right, sorry for the um, you know, speculation in the market, we're a little bit lax, actually, you know, what we were thinking is, we all sat down, we had a pizza, we had a bit of a chat about this, you're right, um, yes, inflation's a little bit out of control, so we're going to put rates up by half a percent, I'm going to stop this quantitative easing nonsense, and just let the markets drop down a bit. Ben Bernanke's not going to say that. So what you have to do is interpret the, you know, the coded mission he, he, you know, he gives. And that's that basically quantitative easing is going to stay until we think the US is self-supporting, which is a waiting game. So right now, until they say quantitative easing is going to stop, you buy dips. Simple as. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much my allotted time today. Uh, again, a bit, you know, Great for your your you know uh, your comments, guys. You know, Forrest Gal and uh, and Roy FX Roy. Great that you know you kind of can interact this way. You know, that's what makes these sessions you know interesting for me. My opinions are my opinions. You know, I'm not always right, but 
I understand the world, or I think I understand the world. So you have to kind of go with your gut instincts and make your trading calls based around that, and then fit it in the framework with your technical. So my view is 80% technical, 20% fundamental. That's how you, you know you, you you do the markets now you trade. All right, guys. Well, listen. Any other questions? Follow me on Twitter at Steve Roughly. Um, you know, got my profile on FX Street. You can contact me anywhere you like. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks to FX Street and the guys, and I'll uh, I'll speak to you very soon, guys. Okay, have a great afternoon.